talking nerf herders this is of course a you uh, well i would say youtube vidcast but i guess it's still technically a youtube vidcast just after the fact um about star wars made by star wars fans for star wars fans and today we've got yet another hollow net news i almost forgot what the fuck it was <laughs> and i'm 100 percent sober today that's probably my problem <laughs> me too me too Ugh, it's fucking horrible i'm working on it right now oh really no i'm, mm. I'm, I'm intentionally sober Oof. Uh, for now anyway fuck so, that uh let's just dive in we we got a bit oh, to yeah. go over um, fucking star wars always holy shit if you guys have not seen this watch it and let us know how hard you cry <laughs> i fucking got scary eyed it was the most beautiful fucking well it's not even really a fan film it's just you know topher grace and uh what jeff yonkers right Did i get that right i don't know if i got that right anyways Yorkers? Two awesome people fucking edited the films together and totally made the new trilogy, well, the last two films, tolerable. Yeah, uh, yeah. but just the way they interweaved the entire saga thus far, it, it was brilliant. It was. It, we actually got more story about Luke Skywalker from this than we did the fucking last two films, I yes, feel. I totally like, so much more from it. Well, in the way they framed it too, I thought it was really brilliant because it was like the films were released where it rather than the original trilogy being about Luke Skywalker and then the prequels being about Darth Vader and Obi-Wan mm -hmm. and the sequels being about who the fuck knows so far. Um, it was very, the entire saga was presented as this is Luke Skywalker's journey and Obi-Wan is reflecting on the past but it's really about Luke Skywalker's journey into the future. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was such a different and wonderful way to look at it because I did very much see the original tr trilogy as um, open and close and then the prequel mm -hmm. as open and close in the same universe, tangentially created, I'm sorry, um, tangentially uh, linked and directly linked characters. Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't necessarily, and I, you know, it's one whole saga, but I didn't necessarily think of it in terms of like a flashback like this presented it as yeah it completely changed how i look at the the prequels really which is amazing. hard because i mean fuck these are films that we've seen you know at least once or twice and to have it completely flipped around like to a different perspective yeah it just shows how much depth there is to those stories as much as we all like to just shit on them mm -hmm. uh, they are some pretty deep things yeah, it, it, it kind of blew my mind. What mm -hmm. what I really loved about it was, and of course, George Lucas has always said that everything in Star Wars, they're echoes of other, you know, of like the original trilogy. And then the prequels have echoes from the original trilogy and the sequels mm -hmm. have echoes from the original and uh, prequel trilogy. So everything in Star Wars echoes off of each other, like mm -hmm. poetry, like rhyming. I think he's a little pretentious in order to, you know, explain some yeah. of his lazy storytelling. But I think he gets away with it, though. <laughs> it, for the most part, I do, too. Like, I think he does a, a pretty good job. It's yeah. it's when they started. Um, I don't know it, when it started presenting Luke Skywalker as attacking. I, I just can't get over that. Like mm -hmm. that ruins everything for me when he starts attacking Ben. Like it yeah. just doesn't. It doesn't jive in my head. And as soon as I saw the the clip of um luke tossing his lightsaber away during the final fight with the emperor and vader um on the second death star saying no i will not fight you i'm a jedi like my father before me that mm -hmm. scene it immediately kicked in my head every douchebag ever saying well why do you complain about luke skywalker in the sequel trilogy flipping the lightsaber behind him he flipped it away in jedi it's like the tone is different yeah. the context is different Very everything is fucking, fucking different. different about it and that's what drives me crazy is that yeah. we're 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 relying on poetry rhyming in order to forgive storytelling faults mm -hmm. and so the first time i watched it i i was just emotionally overwhelmed by this <laughs> yeah the second time as soon as it hit that i was just like Okay, <laughs> come on, like, <laughs> yeah. and then it picks up with everything else, but still, like, I just, it stopped me in my tracks this time, and I was just like, it's not as good as I want it to be, damn it. <laughs> yeah, I just should have totally glossed over that shit, because that's not Luke. 
Luke wouldn't do that. Yeah. Well, and we're going to get into some some stuff later on about that. Yeah. For sure. uh, so that's Star Wars Always. It's on YouTube. Check it out. Search Star Wars Always. You'll find it. Brilliant, brilliant yeah. compilation. Thank you both, Jeff and Topher, for putting that together. Absolutely. I mean, that's And think of the work they had to go through. Well, and it just, it shows the magic of editing. Like, I don't think people really consider how much storytelling and how much art there is to editing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just absolutely. fucking beautiful piece. All right. What do we have next here? All right. Next one is something I'm looking forward to because it's <laughs> campy as shit. It's uh, how not to get eaten by Ewoks and other galactic survival <laughs> skills. This is going to be a dope fucking book. Um, yeah. It just tells you how to survive the galaxy. I, I want to get it just so I can see everything that's in it. Yeah. Like, I, I just... want it. That's one that I'm going to very likely keep in my front room, like on my fancy bookshelves. Yeah. But instead of just seeing the spine, you're going to see the front. That way people know I fucking know my shit. <laughs> I'm not going to get eaten by Ewoks. And the entire premise of this is survival skills, which I thought yeah. was a really wonderful. So disintegrated by a bounty hunter, uh, <laughs> trapped on an exploding Death Star. I want to know how they're going to say to like survive that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's good things to know. How to, get, how to survive being frozen in carbonite. <laughs> I mean, that one's pretty easy. You just don't die. Yeah. Choked by a Sith. Oh, come on. These are great. Yeah. Baked to death on Tatooine. <laughs> There's no surviving that. Just saying. Caught in the crossfire of a deadly battle, taken over by a parasitic Genosian brainworm. So I mean, it happens. It so happens. Great. And of course, everyone complained that these were teddy bears in Return of the Jedi, and yet they're literally trying to eat the heroes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, no. Well, not to mention that they use fucking tk lids as instruments like they are vicious <laughs> fucking killing machines <laughs> i mean yeah they're teddy bears but there's some fucking right. teddy bears right. that are going to eat your face and then fucking use you as an instrument which yeah. i mean to be fair if i got murdered by someone like i would hope they would put my body to use yeah i mean, yeah, I mean i'm an organ donor so why not anything else yeah <laughs> like that's a femur donor a skull donor yeah. I would I mean, love least... to have my head sitting on someone's shelf. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just fucking dope. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it, it's great. Um, and then just the idea that Battlefront 2 finally brought back where you were you had to play this sort of survival mode with Ewoks and Stormtroopers. Mm -hmm. That really cemented, like, the reality that everyone has now of Ewoks. Because I don't, you know, people who, who are in the post- uh, battlefront era of understanding Ewoks have a totally different mindset than people like us growing up watching the original trilogy. Oh yeah, because they're just cute and cuddly. They were totally just cute and cuddly and, you know, teddy bears and, you know, sort of cutesy. No. Vicious. No. Cannibal <laughs> they're not even they really cannibals. They're just vicious. Yeah, carnivals. they won't stop coming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then just a couple other frames here. <laughs> a flow chart. Yeah, I, I love that fucking flow chart. <laughs> That shit had, Are you still in one rolling. piece? <laughs> Are you being rapidly di dissolved? Oh, I love this. Do you have anyone it's, else with it's you? It's so perfect. Are you willing to get <laughs> gooey? <laughs> You're dead. <laughs> Can you escape it's... out the back end? You're dead. Is there anything else blocking the exit? Oh, you're dead. This is so good. It is. It's Whoever just... put this together. I mean, you know Great these guys just love this. Oh, yeah. This is a fucking fan that made this. Yeah. Like, there's no way in hell is just some dude that was getting paid a gig. Like, that was a fan going, this is fucking awesome. <laughs> oh, that's how you survive. Oh, okay. Uh. Yes. Reek. Uh, what to do? Reek are strong, but not particularly nimble. Wait for them to charge, then dodge to the side to avoid getting the horn. It's like a strategy guide for a video game. Yeah. Except life. <laughs> which Wars is Galaxy. the ultimate video game where there's no <laughs> winning you just die eventually it's very very true um all right yeah i want to see this I, I can't wait this is great this is probably one of the most excited i've gotten uh on released books in a little bit yeah every time i hear one it's like yeah that could be cool eh, maybe not like the padme book that's coming out it's like fuck i want to read it but i kind of don't because yeah, it's a I've, kid's book. I've heard reviews, and it's very much like... Um, the, you're talking about the Padme Amidala one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that 
uh, Queen something. I have it on loan from the library, or I'm on the list for hold uh, for for the library. But like, it's political. Like, it's a political book. So, hmm. you know, I liked Bloodline. Oh yeah, Bloodline, Bloodline was tits. And so maybe this will still have that same. I'm still gonna listen to it. You know, audiobook, but I'm not really excited for it <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. All right, so this next one. Galaxy's Edge, we have a Holy lot of photos, so I'm just going to hit shit. unpause and let it go through. Yeah, did they fucking drop a giant load all over our chests? <laughs> like, all right, so this was supposed to be, I believe, third quarter this year, but they're just like, ah, fuck it. We already got one quadrant of it ready. Let's right. fucking open up early. So they're actually going to be doing an early open um, for like the smugglers area, uh, May 31st, I believe it is, in California. Right. And then um, August August 29th um, for Florida. And holy shit, man. Like, I, I'm not one for amusement parks. I mean, I like them, but I wouldn't go further than Farmington to go to one. Right. This I'm fucking going to. I don't know how the hell I'm going to, but I'm going to do it. It's going to be a while because there's <laughs> yeah. waiting lists. Like, oh, yeah. You have it's, to have a reservation. Yeah. It's already, from my understanding, that's pretty much already booked mm -hmm. uh, for the next couple of months. Because uh, I believe it's the first two or three months um, since it's more of a cold open. Mm -hmm. It's strictly just done on reservations. Um, no cost reservations, of course, but right. reservations nonetheless. But goddamn, going through that gallery, it was, I'm I'm so fucking excited. I'm going to be... It's gonna be so good. Just the biggest loser there. I mean, everybody's probably going to be pretty awesome. It, it's going to be a crying fest. They're going to have it tissues is. as you enter. I think there's just going to be like a procession of hugs. Like all <laughs> all up and down the line, like every now and then you're going to start to get weak in the knees and someone's just going to hug you. Grown and then you, men and, and women like, just sobbing with happiness. Yeah. <laughs> as they go through. I mean, it'll take a little while to acclimate, of course. <laughs> Mm -hmm. through the sobbing and everyone will be normal eventually but you're gonna have those moments i don't think so i don't think there'll be a normalcy like, I, I, like piloting the millennium falcon dude i can tell you right now i've been in that cockpit and i fucking cried i lost my shit i don't think there's any like getting used to that i'm pretty sure it's gonna keep it, though right yeah i probably jizz and vomit and shit myself <laughs> all at the same time how is that different from a regular saturday night <laughs> Um, it's gonna be in the I, cockpit I, this time. I won't be alone. <laughs> Usually, I'm just alone. When that happens, so yeah, it's the way I like it. Right. I don't want to make it awkward right. for anybody, don't but at it. least that will be in the company of people that are equally as excited yeah. and full of same shit things. in their pants. <laughs> same things. It's going to be brilliant. And, and again, I have zero desire to go to any Disney theme park ever. I don't like the idea of standing in line for hours. I just don't think it's worth it. But for no. this, I'm seriously rethinking it. Dude, let's fucking make a road trip. Just you and me. Then we don't have to have anybody holding us back. We can enjoy That's it. true. All by ourselves. Oh, man. And it's going to show here in a second. Did you see those robes? The mm -hmm. Jedi robes for sale and stuff? Fuck yeah. Oh, there's... Oh, gosh. Oh. Dude, I just oh. want to get tanked off some weird fucking cocktails and eat some shit. <laughs> like, That's the other thing. There are going to be alcoholic beverages. Yes. And Actual alcohol, like oh. uh, my okay. So my top two that, like, I will pay ungodly amounts of money for, and not even think twice, is the Yub Dub and the Bloody Rancor. I don't give a fuck what is in them. I don't give a shit if I like them. I'm going to just devour them. Well, we're, oh, we're and, and the fuzzy tonton. We have to start the day with the Bloody Rancor because that's the Bloody Mary. Yeah, I'm not sure what a Yub Nub is. I, I mean, there was descriptions. Um, I didn't. I don't remember though. Yeah, I, I don't remember either. Because, but I thought I, that was always really interesting. So, <laughs> super excited for the food. Super excited for the atmosphere. Like this is this is Absolutely. total environment one hundred and one. Yeah. And you know, being who we are, that that's going to be incredible. You mm -hmm. know, on a, a number of different levels. Oh yeah. But then also like all of the stuff to buy there. Like it's going to be like Vegas. Just expect to lose money. <laughs> You're Except just... you won't walk away disappointed. It's true. It's true. <laughs> and probably slightly less hungover. <laughs> Would be my gonna, guess. It's going to be a trunk full of shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Coming back. Yeah, I build a fucking droid. <laughs> build a fucking lightsaber. The wampas they have there are fucking adorable. So I need at least 20 of them. Yeah. They've got 
a billion different kinds of porgs, so of course I have to get each one. Yeah, it's, it's going to very much be like uh, parents and children together walking in and just gasping openly, like, <gasps> <gasps> yeah, you know, like it's it's going to be like nothing we've ever experienced before. Uh, I, I imagine what uh, is going to be at the gate is some wheelbarrows. That way, the children can push their parents back to their car so they can get back to the hotel. Because <laughs> very leave, likely dude. that's what it'll. Be. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. So they give them trank guns. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just excited. Like, okay. So to be fair, you know, we have a couple of Renaissance festivals and stuff like that here um, in our state. And it does kind of bug me when there's people that are too into it. You know, they like approach you and try to have like period conversations in their shitty dialect and stuff. Dude, in this just particular fucking, case. Why don't you just call me out on it right now? <laughs> Just fucking say it. We know you're talking about me. <laughs> In this particular case, I'm kind of looking forward to interacting with actors, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Like, like characters. I love the idea I... of, of working for either Resistance or the First Order and getting like sort of like points or something as you go through. I'm excited to fucking hang out with Hondo. Oh, jeez. Like, oh, Hondo. It's going to be so cool. Hondo's there. He's so cool. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, uh, That's really all there is to say. Just uh, look at those fucking pictures and go. <sighs> I do like the idea of us taking a road trip out there. Dude, I'm dead fucking serious. It's not I'll... that far. Oh, hell no. That's like fucking five Red Bulls and a, <laughs> a bag of jerky and we're there. <laughs> You're just leaking out of your ass. <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's what diapers are for, dude. <laughs> grab a... Okay, so that's what we'll do. We'll grab like a case of astronaut. Red Bull. We'll grab... Yeah, exactly. Just like the astronaut, except we're not going to kill anybody, just our bank accounts. Yeah, yeah. And the I nice thing is we have such supportive wives that they will totally allow us to do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Shona's in the chat room laughing about <laughs> diapers. Um, I wonder, actually... Uh, I wonder how much it's going to cost. Did it? Did you see how much? Do they have price points out there? No, I, I've i looked a couple of times. I haven't seen anything yet. I mean, I would imagine it would probably be right around the same price as like Disneyland, Universal, and shit like that. Right. Hmm. But I honestly don't know. I think it's worth saving up for, and it's definitely worth a road trip. We've got to get on a reservation list, though, because, it, because it's going to take some time. Mm -hmm. I want to plan ahead, you know, make sure we can yeah. get there. It's gonna be I, tough. I would almost want to go out in October just yeah. because everywhere else in there, like California stops for Halloween. So I almost wonder if they would do some Halloween shit at Star Wars Land. Oh. Or sorry, bad too. Like I oh, I, I would lose it. I don't think I would ever be able to get an erection ever again. I would lose it. <laughs> Everything pales in comparison. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Halloween at Star Wars. Fuck. Oh my gosh. There's so yeah. much to pull from. Just night, Dathomir witches like crawling out of the fucking woodwork and shit. Oh gosh, lose my shit if there's a fucking death trooper. Oh man, a, a, a legends death trooper, not the new death troopers. They're cool, but they're not fucking zombies. <laughs> yeah, and we're expected to believe that director Krennic really understood him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, it's not really that far of a stretch if people can understand Astromex. All right. Well, you just shit on my point. Okay. <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. Just saying. Just saying. I just love the concept art. I love all of the locations and, and uh, stuff that... Oh, God. I can't wait. It's you can build your own lightsabers with your own crystals and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I've only done that a couple of times. So, oh I mean, I need to do at least 30 oh more times. Gosh. Oh, my gosh. I'm yeah. lose it. I'm just gonna lose it. I can't. I'm gonna. I'm just speeding through these a little bit faster so we can look at them all. Yeah, it's just so beautiful, and there's so much to see and do. I just the thing is, is I want to be there long enough that I could just waste a day in a mm -hmm. cantina and waste mm -hmm. a day shopping and waste a day doing the adventure stuff. Like, I want to go there to really soak it in. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I wasn't even excited about this until I started seeing these pictures. And here we're getting some yeah. drinks and food. That looks so cool. It uh, looks so good, and every every picture they posted of the of the food, it's just like holy shit and blue milk. Holy shit, blue fucking milk. That's probably gonna like I'm gonna get 
deathly ill drinking nothing but blue milk and cocktails. <laughs> so I've been to Star Wars themed places before. They never have blue milk and it pisses me off. I'm getting hungry. Yeah, me too. Looking at this stuff. Damn. Fuck, it's killer. Tacos. Tacos. Oh, so yeah, like these? Tough. Oh, fuck, man. <sighs> I know. Get a goddamn robe. See, I'm going to have to go in costume. That way I don't buy too much shit mm. because I don't, I won't have pockets and stuff. Right, right. I mean, unless I go as a snow trooper and then die, but look at that Wampa. Oh my God. <laughs> so cool. And a Tauntaun. <laughs> I, God, I, a loser. <laughs> <laughs> and build your own droids. Yeah. It's so cool. Oh, there's one here that I lost my shit over. Like I would love to get a oh, holocron. Holy shit. I didn't know. I didn't see that one, I guess. Yeah, Holocrons are Those will be awesome. And then the statues back there. I want to get those. Oh, and look, is that... That I don't. That looks like it's very reminiscent of Vader's castle, though I know it's not. I don't know what that's from. Um, uh, I got my screen turned down too dark. I can't uh, see. It looks like some sort of citadel. You got, like, books yeah. and... Okay, so that was that. it for that. Let me hit pause. All right, so anything else you want to talk about of... Uh, uh, Star Wars Galaxies. Um, if anybody wants to donate, we will totally buy you something nice and film it for your pleasure, or yeah, send you some dick pics. We're gonna have to come back a second time just to do some footage and discussion because the first time we're gonna be like, ah. oh no, I'll just totally strap a fucking GoPro to my forehead. <laughs> that way everybody can hear me go. Ah, it's so beautiful. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's just gonna be a lot of weird sounds and crying. <laughs> oh man, it's gonna be so good. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, also of course, Star Wars Celebration is coming out, and they just released a uh, concept, or actually the Celebration art that's going to be available only at Celebration. And so I wanted to go through these because I just thought they were really beautiful. These are artists who you know get their work, so I guess, submitted and approved to be officially you know represented there yeah it's just stunning stuff like who oh god it's See, the part that others. the part that kills me like i usually i mean of course i'd love to go to a celebration i mean any star wars fan would love to go to a celebration usually i'm not like oh fuck i have to go to this one mm -hmm. this one i'm actually bummed i'm not going to just because of one single exclusive i mean yes the art here is fucking stunning but Excuse me. So I have uh, I collect tiki mugs mm -hmm. from Think Geek because I've got nothing better to do with my money apparently. <laughs> um, there is a Celebration Chicago exclusive that is a Rancor holding Luke Skywalker, and they're two separate tiki mugs. Oh, dude, dude, <laughs> yeah, it's it's fucking dope. Like I thought my Jabba and Salacious Crumb was awesome. Yeah. No, this is so much cooler because it's a fucking Rancor. Holding Luke. Ugh. That's sweet. Yeah. It's hoping to hoping to snag one for under a couple hundred dollars. Yeah, we'll see. Anybody going, let me know. I'll throw you some money. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love the different styles of these posters. There's only a you know, a, a small handful that I would want to get, but I just loved that they released all of the art. Yeah. You could actually just see it all. It's so great. Oh, I love and that one. So that fucking beautiful. kills me. I that's probably the one that I would definitely buy. So gorgeous. Yeah. I just love these scenery scenics. Mm -hmm. God, it's just so good. That's yeah. a trip right there. You that is the Vader mask with Padme. Okay, so next story here. Alright. We're on to some toys. Fucking toys. So this is a Triple Force Friday. This was announced uh, this in, within the past month. But what's interesting about this is that they have uh, a whole bunch of things. First of all, Star Wars news has been a little sparse since Solo was released. Mm. We're about to get completely dumped on. I'm talking like German porn style. This, mm -hmm. as, <laughs> as soon as Celebration hits, it's five days of Star Wars information dump. 
Mm -hmm. um, and so they're announcing that uh, at 12 a.m. on October 4th, they're going to be doing a massive release, this Triple Force Friday event. And there's always been Force Friday events about uh, new toys coming out to promote you know, the newest stuff. But we have a lot of stuff coming out. We've got the new Clone Wars show. Mm -hmm. We've got the new Mandalorian. And this is all this year. The new Mandalorian yeah. show. We've got Episode Nine. So the uh, oh, we have Je Star Wars Jedi the Fallen Order, the video game that I'm going to live stream every level on on Twitch, probably too, since it's more appropriate. since Twitch fucking works <laughs> <laughs> and that <laughs> reason. But uh, so the products that they're going to be releasing that they're talking about specifically in this article about the release is the highly anticipated final installment of the Skywalker Saga, Star Wars Episode Nine, first ever Star Wars live action series, The Mandalorian, uh, exclusive uh, for the upcoming streaming service Disney Plus. Which who knows when that's going to be released, but it's supposed to be soon. December. Uh, oh, is it? I thought it was yeah. October because they were no. trying to get a jump. December, because everything's uh, supposed to be coming out like right around the same time as episode nine. Well, I mean, un unless they changed it from last I read, it's supposed to be um, fourth quarter 2019, likely December. Huh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm okay with that. Uh, so what they're talking about here are products spanning categories from toys to collectibles, housewares, books, apparel, and more is all going to go on sale beginning uh, again, 12 a.m. on October 4th. I feel like October 5th, I'm going to be going out and, well, 12 on October 4th. So the morning of October 4th, I'll be going out to a couple different stores just to see what's out there. The truth is, is toys haven't been selling very well in the sequel trilogy era. Mm -hmm. Like people just don't really want to buy them. And I, I'm not entirely sure why I, collectors are still out there doing what they can, but I think you know, the nostalgia for the original trilogy and prequel trilogy is what fuels purchases and mm -hmm. excitement over their releases. If people just aren't really that excited about the releases or it doesn't seem to be targeted toward 12 year old kids like it, all the other movies yeah. really were, um, then, of course, you're not going to sell toys. So we'll see yeah, what see, happens with this. New one. For me, it's like, I don't know, the Black Series. Black Series has always kind of been a thing, mm -hmm. but... Like, for me, that's really what's ruined Star Wars toys, because it's like, I could spend 15 on this, or for an extra $5, I could get a beautiful fucking sculpture that if I get drunk enough, I'll rip it out of the box and play with the fucking thing. <laughs> so, right. I, I don't know. And yeah, they really haven't put out anything cool. I mean, there's been some cool things, but not much. Well, again, I blame the, the films that are being released. Mm -hmm. Like, I that, really... Yeah. There are... There are a few characters in each of the films, and in most cases, like one character, that I'd be like, oh, I'd love to put that on a shelf. But other than that, I'm just like, no, thanks. Not, well, not into it. Well, the biggest part of the toys, like the reason why we fucking had to have them is because we wanted to recreate the films as yeah, kids exactly. and adults. But, yeah, lately, I mean, aside from the standalones, like, who gives a shit? I don't want to sit down for like two hours and... Because, yeah. I mean, one, my wife's going to make fun of me, and two, <laughs> it's not really that entertaining anymore. Yeah. No, that's true. Most of the collectibles that are purchased nowadays, and toys, are sitting on shelves, not actually being used. Um, so anyway, I was excited about that because this is an opportunity... Because we don't know what's happening with Episode Nine, and we mm -hmm. don't know what the scope is of the Mandalorian. Like I, I genuinely believe there is going to be force users in the Mandalorian. Eventually. I well, genuinely be. believe it. We're going to, we're going to get some deep lore that we love because it is our people who grew up like we did watching the films who have the passion like we are and are not trying to subvert expectations, but trying to pace fan service mm -hmm. and tell a good story in the process. So I think that's why we're definitely eventually we're going to see force abilities. We're going to see Mandalorians fighting. It's, it's going to be so goddamn good. Mm -hmm. How could you not want to get those characters? You know? Oh, absolutely. And that game Jedi starts fallen order. I have such high hopes for that. At see, I feel point, like loose because I actually, this is the first time I've heard about it. Oh, really? Of course, I, I didn't go through the show notes like I should have. <laughs> they they announced it last year, and they've been working on it, and they're ready oh, to announce tons of it. Okay, never mind, never mind. Sorry, I thought it was like completely new. Oh, new. no, no, no. Okay, just so kidding. It's, 
it's ready to be released at the end of this year, I think. So again, I am going to be live streaming, playing it and just geeking out because I loved the Jedi Knight series. And mm -hmm. eventually I'll get back to live streaming the, the Jedi Knight series that I started <laughs> with one episode, but I just haven't had time. Uh, but I will get back to it. But I'll, I'm going to skip everything and just go straight to Fallen Order once it's released. And this is something that's different for me because I don't play video games regularly. Like, it's it's very rare I can sit down and say, okay, I've got a couple hours. Let me just fuck around. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to make an exception for this one. Um, and then this next one, we, we talked about it when it was in the bidding phase. And I kind of laughed at the idea of it. But now that it's out, I kind of want it. Like, really I... bad. I am so pissed at myself for not <laughs> fucking helping out with that. The oh, fucking barge. It looks it's amazing. So, it's, it's like one of the best scenes in Jedi. Wow. And it's just every great character and moment relived through. Oh, God. It's so massive. Like, so, I would have to. I, I'd have to, like, completely gut my office to make a perfect stand for it. Mm. Oh. And yeah, the detail. I should have got it. This. Okay, so it's here's cool. some specs. 14 pounds, 49.35 inches long, 14.64 inches wide, and just over 17 inches from the base to the tip of the sails. Come yeah. on! <laughs> Sounds like the size of my dick. <laughs> Poor Jana. Jeez. That's a lot to take in. <laughs> yeah, I... Have you seen Captain Marvel yet? Uh, dude, that's why I'm like this the whole time we've been sitting here. I just watched it earlier. He's like a flurg. <laughs> she, your girl yeah. has to be a flurg to swallow <laughs> your, your gigantic barge-sized cock. Yeah, and then she's going to puke it up. <laughs> Asshole. Eh, whatever, at least she took it. I loved that. Can I get a quick reaction from you? What would you think? Um, I wasn't excited um, at all. Hmm. Because, I mean, okay, we already know what we're going to get with the Marvel movies. Yep. Yes, they're good. Yes, they're beautiful. They're mostly cartoons. And people want to fucking argue that shit with me. But CG, mm -hmm. it's a fucking cartoon. <laughs> like, Aquaman is a cartoon with it, a little bit of live action. And the story itself is uh -huh. very Saturday morning cartoon. So Yeah. But, yeah, no, like, I am totally back on board with the Avengers storyline now. Yeah. Like, I cannot fucking wait for Endgame to come out. If it's even half as good as Captain Marvel was, mm -hmm. I'll be fucking satisfied. Because honestly, the other Avengers movies, I don't even remember them because they were not that good. Yeah, they were forgettable for me for like, sure. This, this was definitely up there with like Ant-Man for me. Yeah. Ant-Man and Homecoming. It's nice to know you liked it. I really, really enjoyed it as well. Yeah, fucking killer. Uh, let's get back to geeking out about your cock here. Because <laughs> yes. holy shit, look at the different It's just like my cock, it opens up. <laughs> ah! It's filleted. Uh, yes. <laughs> it has secret passages <laughs> that you can go down into. That's where I hide my toys. <laughs> I love this cell. This is a pleasure barge for Jabba to go around and watch people get thrown into the Great Sarlacc. Mm -hmm. uh, and he has a prison. In Oh, I guess, of course, it makes sense he'd have a prison. But they, they well, rode around well. in skiffs with the prisoners, so I don't know. Um. Oh, gosh. It, this Whatever. is such a beautiful it, a piece. I think it was like $500 mm -hmm. to that's buy why into. I that's, why, that's why I didn't get it. Because If like, I didn't have kids, I totally would have gotten this. And if I could have sold my fucking hearse to get it, I would have done it. But, yeah. Look at the mini Rancor wall mount. I never saw that before. Yeah, I never oh. saw that either. That's fucking killer. All the little details. God damn, I love this so much. And yeah. the little skiffs, too. And Lando. Ah! <laughs> I'm making out. I have this figure. Piece. Oh my gosh, I love this so much. So much fun. I can't believe. Okay, so that's our next story. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm bummed. There's only uh, 10,000 that have rolled off the assembly line. I think 9,000 of them are pre order and sold. So mm -hmm. I don't know what they're doing with the last thousand, but it's going to be much more than 500 to get your hands on one at this point. Oh, absolutely. So there was 250 individual parts molded by factory machines and put together by machine and hand built. This is a labor of love. Yeah. That's like a car. <laughs> I'm just so impressed. So wildly impressed. I wonder what they're going to do next. Like, ugh, the detail. Um, okay, so let's 
should we jump over to rumors now? Absolutely, because we got power? some doozies. Oh boy, oh boy. Here's like this, this one. is one. I still I don't know how to feel about it. One part I don't of know me is excited, not, but well, I mean, there's that too. Yeah. But it's it's starting to pop up on different outlets. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll we'll see. I mean, he's always sort of been consulted behind the scenes, anyways. Mm -hmm. But to actually have him essentially reshooting shit for the film. Well, that's what's so interesting is I don't know if they are re reshooting specifically, um, or if he's just giving advice along the way, and then JJ is going to use or discard that av advice. But this yeah, idea... I've he's, seen both. The, the idea that he's doing it to fix... Um, I don't know what the hell is going on. With, I tried to open up the, the website that's linked and it gave me a bunch of weird pop-ups. Oh, um, the, uh, the idea that he's there to fix Luke, I think is very important for mm -hmm. a lot of fans out there. Absolutely. I mean, that's one thing that universally I have not met a single person, whether they like the film or not, was happy with how Luke went out and how Luke was portrayed. Like it just, it was a travesty. That was the biggest fault besides Canto Bite that the last film had. Yeah. Anecdotally, I, I've heard a lot and listened to a lot of podcasts where there are a lot of people that really loved the last Jedi and they didn't mind it at all. And they thought it was actually very much in line with this character. And so it, you know, like everything in star Wars from a certain point of view, a lot of people yeah. are going to, you know, come down on either side. So no matter what they do, they're screwed with some parts of the fan base. Oh, of course. But I think that the people who rolled with the last Jedi, they're not overly sensitive about the character as much mm -hmm. as the super hardcore Lukeites are. I just made that up. I don't know if that's a word. Um, that's the word now. <laughs> and so I think that no matter what, they'll go along with it. It's the mm -hmm. people who had a problem with Luke in The Last Jedi. If they don't fix what we saw was broken, that we're going to have a huge fuss over it as well. There's probably going to be riots in the streets and fires. Yeah. But do you think any decision that's made at this point with the thought that George gave suggestions to the outcome, do you think that'll temper emotional reactions or do you think that'll cause them to you know get more inflamed fuck i don't know because that's that's another one of those things where there, there's no at least from my experience there's no right down the middle fan either you're all for everything that's going on or you fucking hate everything mm -hmm. and same with like how Lucas is, or how people portray Lucas with the prequels. Yeah. Like, you either love him, or what the fuck is wrong with him. So, I I really don't know. I mean, I like the idea that he was on set consulting. Mm -hmm. Regardless if they use anything, I like the fact that they, you know, went to the creator and got input. Mm -hmm. Like, at least that's I mean, that's cool, but uh, I, I don't know. Like, I wanted to be excited about this, but at the mm -hmm. same time, it's like, I don't know what the fuck he could do. <laughs> well, and then here, here's the thing. George always had control and sign-off approval of everything that mm -hmm. came out in Star Wars, whether it was role-playing games, to books, to comics, um, to to the movies. Like, everything. He, he, he had eyes on and he approved or not. And he is yeah. on record always saying that Luke was the most powerful Jedi ever. Mm -hmm. Period. The most powerful force user ever. And we saw that in the EU content that was released, and we saw this character's development over... 40 fucking years. Yeah. And that's why we have such a visceral reaction to them dramatically changing the character that we grew up with literally. And we knew yeah. as the most powerful force user. So with Luke, with Lucas coming back, I feel like he's going to lean back into that. He's going to be like, look, we need to somehow have a little bit of marriage between the Luke that the fans knew that I approved and the Luke that you guys are presenting. So yeah. we're going to have to put some power into him. We're going to have to have him. Well, and there's a couple ways they can do that, in my opinion. Flashbacks of the, him with Snoke or the Emperor, like, discovering, like, more Emperor's clone, like, in Dark uh, Empire. Um, mm -hmm. And having, you know, just re-experiencing re Luke through a younger Luke. Or having the Force Ghost, because um, Force Ghost Luke be much more powerful 
than even mm-hmm. Yoda. And the reason why I mention that is because every Force Ghost released has been shown to be more powerful than the last. So you had Qui-Gon, yeah. who couldn't even manifest himself, just his voice. You had Yoda, who ended up learning... Oh, I'm sorry, you had Obi-Wan, who was next, who ended up learning how to project his presence. And you had mm-hmm. Yoda, who actually could physically affect the world around him. So now, yeah. if we go in that continuous line of being able to masterfully reimagine themselves through the Force, Luke should be able to, like, corporally appear like at this point oh yeah or be able to like hold things you know i mean you know you can argue they always could because obi-wan actually sat on a log as a ghost but you know that could have been just played off because alec guinness didn't want to stand up (laughs) so (laughs) that is true yeah and it it would it would go to reason that i mean if obi-wan kenobi who admittedly is a powerful jedi oh yeah once he died he became even more powerful than he was at that point. Like, obviously, fucking Luke should become, like, just some fucking beast of the Force. Yeah. He did what no other Jedi could do. He mm-hmm. he he mastered the Force, presumably, so much so that he wanted nothing to do with his own order because he saw how foolish it was. Like, mm-hmm. he... And you can argue... And here's an interesting point that I never thought about before. We're discussing this. Uh, now, but in Dark Forces, I'm sorry, um, Dark Empire, Luke went to the dark side. Like he, mm-hmm. he felt like he, in order to fully defeat the Empire, uh, the Emperor, he had to, because the Emperor was coming back as clones. Uh, he had to go to the dark side to understand the dark side, and he sort of lost himself for a while, and then he came back. And so Luke has always straddled this line. He has a, a, a history mm-hmm. of family, uh, you know, DNA going from dark to light and backward in light yeah. to dark, and so he followed that same path. What if at this point, this is just another one of those? You know, The Last Jedi was him just sort of like in between going back to dark and light and going, you know what, I just, I, I need a break. I don't want it. I don't even want to deal with it. And then he comes back and he's like, no, 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 I'm back. Stronger than ever. You can call me a force ghost if you want, but I'm going to knock some shit down. <laughs> like, I, yeah. And he's like the physical manifestation of the force. That would be amazing. That would be that would totally change how much I don't like the Last Jedi. Yeah, mm. it it would be too. I don't think they'll do that, but I like to no. I like <laughs> probably to not. But it'd, it'd be wonderful. There's just so much. I don't know. Do, do you? What do you think the best case scenario um, Lucas could change to Luke uh, to make him more Luke like? What are the things you think L- that Lucas would do? Fuck, that's a tough question. Because he must have been pissed. <sighs> oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm sure he was pissed wiping away his tears with, you know, stacks of millions of dollars. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm sure it's still an intellectual property that came out of his noggin. <sighs> Fuck, I really don't know. I I mean, yeah, I don't know. That's a hard question. Because we're, we're only relying on the Luke that we knew from Episode 8. Like, that's... Mm-hmm. that's all we know of who he is being presented as we know something yeah. put him there he alludes to you know learning and that's the reason and you know him trying to kill his nephew and that's the reason sorry my phone is beeping um but uh other than that in order for lucas and jj abrams to turn him back around we have to see like some dialogue we have to see some redemption mm-hmm. we have to see him in action because that's what luke was always was he was an active yeah. participant he wasn't someone who sat on the sidelines like you know mm-hmm. was presented in episode eight and whether he was doing the right thing or the foolish thing that got him in more trouble he was still an active participant and oh yeah absolutely well i mean he was a part of like he wasn't a part of the original order where there was a lot of politics and sitting around and discussing and blah 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 he just oh this has to be done i'm gonna fucking do it yeah and it was very much a timetable too because it was like the empire was gonna destroy everyone so he had to he had a fire yeah. under his ass that was making him move yeah maybe him. just a little bit <laughs> uh i, I always yeah. wondered what luke would be like after you know i mean we're mm-hmm. we're told that he traveled the galaxy l- learning looking for more information to uncover about the force and learning in you know legends of luke skywalker um collection of short stories was very much a series of him just going to different cultures learning how they experienced it and 
gaining knowledge and, and abilities that mm-hmm. way. Uh, and so I, I always imagine, you know, George's original idea was for Luke to literally kind of be like a monk in episode seven mm-hmm. of, you know, and so when Ray comes, he's just sitting there levitating these massive rocks and he's ready like some old ancient, you know, Chinese master in an old Kung Fu flick to teach her the ways of the force because he knows that she is the next student that needs to, you know, sort of step God, up. That would have been so beautiful. It would have. But that's that's the vision that he had originally. Do you think he, they're going to return mm-hmm. to that? Because the Luke we got, he cut himself off from the force. He didn't want yeah. to be involved in the galaxy's events anymore. He didn't care about his sister or his friends. He didn't care about any of that. And... um. totally fucking lost where I was going. <laughs> there was one last nail in the coffin I was going to fucking hammer in. But I yes, I, I, I do hope they do take it back to that, you know, martial arts film sort of style. Yeah. Where it's... Because, I mean, there are a lot where, you know, you get the guy that secludes himself. Like, he was the master of everything. And then he said, fuck this, because something bad happened. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, a young kid that pisses him off ends up turning them over and then they take on the world and win. Like I, because that could still happen, mm-hmm. especially with the revelations of how force ghosts can interact with the physical world. Like Yoda going like this and burning the tree changed everything. So, mm-hmm. I mean, we could very well get him just kind of walking around as a force ghost, whispering into Ray's ear. Oh, trip that dude. Ah, poke that motherfucker in the eye. We got this shit. I wonder if um, if Lucas is going to try to sneak in some of his Wills stuff in this oh, last that'd be thing. Good. Because what if the Wills could allow Luke to return or to manifest physically? Like, what if that's what they would be that able could... to do? Damn. And then he I mean, could that would slip make... in the story, a little bit of the story that he wanted to do originally, and pay homage to the Luke that everyone loved in the original trilogy. God, that'd be amazing. That would be interesting. I would love Fingers to see crossed. that. I would love to Definitely. see that. I would just love to see a, a redo of the sequel trilogy with just George Lucas's ideas. Yeah. Just just make it a miniseries. Yeah. That'd they have great. Disney Plus. We'll buy it. Yeah. We'll watch it. I obviously we're going to fucking buy it. They already know that. Just give it to us. <laughs> yeah, seriously. You have our money. Give me what I want. Um, yeah, for sure. How's supposed to work? <laughs> okay, so the next one we should probably move to because we could just talk about this all night. Yeah, yeah, we could. And this, this is the last is story one... we have. Yeah, I'm really hoping that this shit's true. I mean, of course, there's been rumors about it, but supposedly the Knights of the Old Republic era television series is going to be a thing. Um, See, I always I thought mean, of course, Penny Up and Weiss would do the, a trilogy of Old Republic. See, that, yeah, that was what everybody was assuming, but from what I was reading, it's supposedly it's become a going to become an actual show, not just like a new trilogy, so which makes sense Penny because, I mean... Do? If they're not doing this TV uh, show, because they, they are only doing like a trilogy, their own three-movie trilogy, mm-hmm. like... And if they're doing a yeah, old I, Republic TV show, there's no way they're going to have an old Republic movie. I mean, they could, they very well could because there's so much to cover with the old Republic. Yeah. I mean, that's, we're assuming that if it's the old Republic, they're going to go with, you know, the, the great hyperspace war. Right. And it's going to focus solely on the Jedi and the Sith empire mm-hmm. or sorry, the old Republic and the Sith empire. There's so much in there that they can go with. They can go with the Mandalorian outlook, which, you know, admittedly they probably won't because of the Mandalorian. But we've also got all the the, actually, you know, that would make sense. That's true. Have your tie-in shit where somebody makes a reference in one episode of the Mandalorian, and then the next episode of the Old Republic is that shit. No, I I can get behind that. But there's also so much involved with like crime syndicates, the fucking cartels. I mean, a good chunk of uh, Knights of the Old Republic deals with working for the Huts and being on Nal Hutta and stuff. So, I mean, there's so much they can pull from. The, there's definitely not a lack of shit they could use to make multiple series, multiple films. So, 
I mean, I'm all for getting a shit ton of old Republic era stuff. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I just thought of something. So what if they, what if Benioff and Weiss do the Jedi Sith conflict in a trilogy that ends with, you know, like a Bane making the rule of two. Um, and then that'd be amazing. The, the TVs, when we have the Mandalorian TV series to give us an idea of, Oh, they're alluding to all this great time of the Mandalorians. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, maybe they allude to like the Jedi Mandalorian conflicts or something. And so you have a movie about a movie series about old Republic setting up the world. You have a series Mm -hmm. about Mandalorians setting up the culture now you can combine the two ideas in this series of the Mandalorian Wars with the Jedi mm-hmm. in that era. And so we already have a taste for the era, and now we already have a mm-hmm. taste of the cultures. Now it's not a leap to go hardcore political war, intrigue, drama. Oh, gosh, that would be brilliant. I also yeah, that'd be killer. <laughs> um, that they already, they're already working on scripts for uh, an Obi-Wan movie. Um, not movie, but yeah. the series. Yeah, the, the streaming the, series. Yeah, mini series, like a six part series. Yeah. Yeah, I completely forgot to write that shit down. But yeah, when I heard that, that that did my heart good. Because I mean, of course, we were all hoping for an Obi Wan standalone because mm-hmm. I mean they were already doing the standalones, but then because they you know, fucking came too soon and solo was a flop because you know, they didn't give you the good solid two minutes, they only gave you thirty seconds. Mm-hmm. Which happens. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I think honestly, if they do a miniseries instead of a fucking standalone film, like we all win. Yeah, because that's that's a character that I mean we have so much information about that character, but it's one of those ones just like Darth Vader that I will fucking eat up everything that they have about him. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, is you can you can develop longer like B plots and A plots in a. a a series that you can't necessarily do so well in a standalone mm-hmm. movie and you can explore yeah, like absolutely. complexities of emotion and connection with other characters that you just don't have time to do in a, a two hour film. So yeah. I'm, I'm actually more excited for the idea of an Obi-Wan series than an Obi-Wan film. Like, absolutely. Okay. So then what right now we, as far as series that are like announced and then rumored, we have, um, that you know, I'm, I just want to know what your favorite is. So we have the Mandalorian, the uh, Cassian Andor, supposedly Obi Wan, supposedly Old Republic. What are you most mm-hmm. looking forward to out of all that? Honestly, the Old Republic, like that yeah. is, I I'm just so fucking stoked for it. Just because there's so much they could do with it, and they could totally win back everybody if they get it right. Like, all they have to do, the only thing they have to do to make that the best fucking series ever created is say Revan's name. Yeah. They don't even have to have him in it. If they say Revan, everybody's just going to get the fucking vapors and just, oh, <laughs> immediately. I declare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm yeah. I'm really looking forward. Like, I'm really hoping that that's real, and if it is real, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. So what if Benioff and Weiss are actually doing like uh, if let's imagine if they're not doing an old republic what do you think that they would do I would almost hope it's like wild space or maybe they are the ones that like that's how we tie in the Chiss ascendancy <gasps> to that this would be era a good one if because the Chiss ascendancy trilogy like I mean that we need that yeah. because we've already been getting a lot of Thrawn stuff and the whole idea of the Chiss ascendancy and the wild space and all that, that's still a thing. Mm-hmm. Like we need to know what's out there and what Palpatine was going after. And we could very easily get that just, you know, completely underhanded in a story that, uh, yeah, I just, that's what I think it could be. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could also see it being, you know, an old Republic thing. Even with the series, because I mean I that, that would be great. That stuff you. happens. So. See, I, I would I would buy either of those as great options. I want to throw a third in there. What if this is Plagueis trilogy? 
Like I would have a heart attack. <laughs> the rise of Plagueis, his the death of his old yeah. apprentice in the first episode or the first one. The second one is him meeting or or discovering um, Sheev Palpatine, mm -hmm. and then the third one is Palpatine tying right into episode one. Oh my God! If they did a Hobbit version of Darth Plagueis, I would fucking lose my shit. <laughs> what do you mean a Hobbit version? Well. It's like the Hobbit, it's 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 a single book. It's just oh, a little teeny oh, tiny yeah, book. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You and they turned scared. it into a trilogy. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No, it's gonna have Darth Plagueis walking around. Well, I thought you were like, let's make Darth Plagueis, Plagueis a Hobbit. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, no. Coming Hun, in <laughs> or Buns, Hobbits, they're pretty close together. I mean, like yeah, there's probably only a doubt. Spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I mean, seven feet. That's not that big of a difference. Okay. Now that I know what you're talking, yes, yes, and yes. That's exactly yeah, what I'm talking about. If they just straight up took that novel and made that shit canon, but a trilogy, I could die happy. And I think I think it was James Lucino, Lucino that did that one. Yeah. Um, but he had said it's supposed to be a crime drama. Like that, that was, it was like, you know, the Plagueis himself was very much just running criminal underworld, you know, sort of oh, machinations. Absolutely. And so with it being like a mob film with in Star Wars with force powers and setting up what we all know and love so much as this era of the Sith and to you know have that book ended with the sequel trilogy of setting up the end of the Skywalker saga, I think that would be a perfect trilogy. To, to bring in, it would give a whole new perspective on the prequel series, um, movies. It would be amazing. So yes, Chiss would be at the other end of the timeline. Uh, Plagueis would be at the very beginning of the timeline in current era, or mm -hmm. go straight back to Old Republic. That would be brilliant. Oh, now just cover about five thousand years worth of shit. <laughs> they, they've got a little bit to choose from. Yeah. God, I hadn't even thought about the Plagueis, but God, that'd be so perfect. I I Especially because honestly. they can write political shit. Yeah, yeah, and, and well, too, yeah. And we have enough mm. going on right now in our world to have those little parallels for people to climb on board, you know? To, oh my to make God, yeah, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> you know, it would just be so like perfect. That. It would be yeah. so perfect. Um, okay, so I was going to throw in another freaking rumor what if. Oh, dude, why, why? I'm getting old. I keep forgetting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> My balls are sagging and I can't remember anything. Um, uh, it's it's gone. It's totally gone. Fuck. Okay, well, that's it. That's all <laughs> that's I got. That's cool. At least you thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about thinking about it. Um, all right, well, is yeah. there anything else you wanted to cover for rumors or any other Star Wars news about this month? Yep, that's uh, that's about the bulk of it. I think we covered a good amount. We're already at an hour, so I, th I think it's okay. Well, I'm sure people want to get on with their lives. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, yeah. probably not. They don't have lives. They're listening to us. Star Wars is is life. So, so thanks. That's uh, true. That's thank you all true. so much for tuning in. We appreciate <laughs> uh, your comments and your likes and your subscribes and all that stuff. Of course, our regular shows are on YouTube, but we're on a hiatus from YouTube as they're currently screwing us so check us out on uh, twitch.tv slash the infernal brotherhood for the live shows twice a month and then everything is going to be archived on both youtube.com um, slash uh, the infernal brotherhood of the scruffy looking nerve herders and our the infernal brotherhood.com website so you can go to any one of those of course we also have twitch um we have a Twitter account and we have a Facebook account if that's where you want to connect with us as well. And of course, on the main shows, we have someone different every month saying, uh, my name is X and I'm a scruffy looking nerf herder. If you want to send us your video of you saying that or just a voice and we'll add our own avatar over it, then uh, send it to the Inferno Brotherhood at gmail.com or send it to our Google Voice account. I can do it. Uh, that's 801-899-6168. That is just Google Voice. No one's going to pick it up. So you can uh, take your time and, and do what you want to do on that. We appreciate your guys' interaction. Mm -hmm. May the Force be with you. This is Nutsen. Oh, Goomba Fish. <laughs>
princess move. <laughs> really digging deep for uh, for lines now.